What's up? Today we're going to find out if it's worth it putting a 2080 Ti inside of an external GPU enclosure. Is a 2080 Ti in an eGPU closure like this Razer Core V2 more powerful than an internal GTX 1080? The main question is whether or not the bandwidth and throughput and compatibility is all going to work well enough to outperform that internal 1080 GPU. Now these tests were done at 1080p for a reason. I use a 1080p 240Hz monitor so so that is the particular reason why I'm doing this test because I want to see what is the best possible setup and if I stick with a laptop setup is it better for me to use an eGPU enclosure or is it better for me to use the internal GPU of my laptop. All of that said if you were to switch to 4k gaming or 1440p gaming you would see a bigger gap in performance with the 2080 Ti taking a bigger lead. So we're gonna be comparing three systems as our baseline we have our desktop setup we have an i7 7700k clocked at 4.8 gigahertz. Now we're using an RT RTX 2080 Ti with this desktop and this is going to give us a really good idea of the kind of performance you might expect. For our laptop system we're using an Aorus X7 V8 DT. This has a full desktop level GTX 1080 inside of it. Now in the Aorus we're using an i7 8850H and this is going to be close to as powerful as a laptop processor as you can get without getting a beefy thick one. We've got the Aorus X7 clocked at 4.3 gigahertz across all cores for all of these tests. For both the eGPU enclosure as well as the internal GPU testing. Now I'd like to explain how we tested each of these games. With Fortnite what we did is we started at point A and moved towards point B and we tested Fortnite on epic settings as well as a mixture of low and epic and we'll have both of those results for you here coming up. For PUBG we just did one round of testing with a mixture of low and ultra. Now there are three measurements that we use. The first test is looking at the heart of the center of the city of Yasna. Now this is the biggest city in all of PUBG and if you get good FPS here you're gonna get much better FPS everywhere else. Now for our second test we turn around and look at the center of this hill here and this is gonna give us a good idea of the FPS when you're in a rural environment. Last but not least we take the worst case scenario and go directly into the heart of Yasna and run through it from point A to point B and get a good idea of the average FPS benchmarking it with MSI Afterburner. Now for Far Cry 5 we did both the benchmarking test as well as a run through the forest from point A to point B and captured the average using MSI Afterburner. Now for The Witcher 3 we had just a simple test this time around. We usually do a run through a city as well but we were short on time. This time we're set up inside of a single room to see what the FPS is when looking down a hallway with fire and a couple characters on the screen. This is going to be a rather high average overall for The Witcher 3 compared to more complex areas of the game. So without further ado let's get into these benchmarks. Taking a look at 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra we've got the eGPU coming in at 7,250, just the laptop hitting 5,300, which is actually really respectable and a really good score for a laptop with a 1080. And then we have the desktop with the 2080 Ti coming at 8,096. According to this benchmark, there should be a significant gap between the external GPU and the laptop GPU. But as you will see, this gap closes down quite a bit when it comes to games that take a lot of CPU usage, which admittedly, a lot of the more popular games these days take advantage of both the CPU and GPU as you will see in these upcoming tests. Taking a look at the Fortnite performance on epic settings you can see that the external GPU has a slight advantage over the laptop performance but it's such a tiny gap there's a very very small difference here especially running through tilted where the performance is going to be primarily limited by the CPU though in the dusty divot run we're still seeing only a difference of 10 frames per second. All that to say the desktop system definitely has has a distinct advantage coming at 191 which is the highest frames on epic settings that I have seen to date and a tilted tower score of 141 which is again exceptionally good. All that to say very few people run the game on epic settings anyway because they would rather get higher frame rates. And that brings us to our next slide which is a mixture of low and epic settings. Essentially all the effects have been turned off or to their lowest settings with anti-aliasing, view distance, and textures at epic settings. And as you can see the performance gap between these three systems goes down to almost 
to nothing. The desktop is only getting 17 more frames than the laptop in the Dusty Divot run and only 18 more frames in the Tilted Towers run. And I think this really goes to show that when you turn down the processing and the effects and the resolution, a 2080 Ti really is overkill in the sense that you'll ultimately be bottlenecked by your processor anyway. And part of this performance difference here could be the fact that we just have a slightly higher clocked desktop processor here. If we had the identical clocks of 4.3 gigahertz across all three systems, we may have seen the exact same or almost the exact same benchmark results. All right, next up is Player Unknown Battlegrounds or PUBG for short. Let's go ahead and take a look at these in three separate segments. We've got the city, first of all, and we're getting better performance on the laptop GPU than we are on the external GPU, but the overall performance between those two systems is nearly identical. There's only a difference of a couple frames between the laptop and the laptop with the external GPU. I think this goes to show that there is that bottleneck that is occurring between the Thunderbolt 3 port and the external GPU that is really limiting the amount of frames per second you can get when it's a very CPU bound game. Another really interesting thing to note is that there's only a very small performance difference between the laptop Top. Even in the worst case scenario, we're only talking about a 13 frame difference when looking at the city of Yasna. That said, when you go to look at the rural benchmark, you see a difference of 61 frames per second where the 2080 Ti would be much preferable in those rural environments when using a 240 hertz monitor. Overall, it's really good performance on all three systems for PUBG, but if you're trying to push 240 hertz, then ideally as often as possible, you wanna get as close to that mark. So that means a desktop 2080 Ti will get you to that mark much more frequently. Now, Far Cry 5 was a game that heavily utilizes both the CPU and GPU, and you can really see the external GPU bottlenecking quite a bit here. Only 84 frames per second in the benchmark compared to 104 from the laptop with the internal 1080. Another thing that was interesting is that the benchmark for all three laptops actually put out more frames than our forest run, which was surprising. I didn't think running through the forest would be more taxing on the system than all of the explosions and everything that goes on during the benchmark. In this case, actually playing Far Cry 5 is tougher on the system. Again, these are only at 1080p resolutions, but I'm really surprised that the 2080 Ti isn't putting out higher frames per second. When you compare these two systems, only getting 92 frames per second in the forest run on the laptop and 104 on the full desktop, it really goes to show that Far Cry 5 is a CPU bound game, especially at 1080p resolution. Overall, I'm really impressed at how well the laptop is holding up to a full-fledged desktop with a 2080 Ti. Now let's take a look at the Witcher 3 performance and you can see that the 2080 Ti is really dominating, getting about 80% more performance than the laptop and the 2080 Ti in the external enclosure. I think the main reason for this is that this particular scene in The Witcher 3 is very GPU bound, so we're not being limited by the processor, and so you get to see that full potential performance of the 2080 Ti. The interesting thing here is that the 2080 Ti in the external enclosure is not really living up to what the 2080 Ti in the desktop could potentially perform like. And this really goes to show the limitations of external GPUs. Sure, you get great performance with them, but in my test so far, the internal GPU of a 1080 outperforms the abilities of an RTX 2080 Ti, which should, in theory, never happen. And here we have the overall average for all three systems. With the external GPU, we averaged 110 FPS. The laptop with the internal 1080, we averaged 115 FPS. And with the full-fledged desktop with 2080 Ti, we managed 153 FPS on average. So what do all these benchmarks amount to? Well, first of all, the 2080 Ti actually performed very similarly to the laptop internal 1080. And this is very similar to the results we had with a 1080 Ti and an external GPU enclosure. So if you are gonna go with an external GPU enclosure, I recommend getting a 1080 Ti instead of a 2080 Ti, or maybe even just a 1080. Honestly, the bandwidth issue between the external GPU and the laptop really adds a bottleneck here, so it's not really worth getting anything more than the 1080 Ti right now, in my opinion. I think overall the really surprising result is that if you are gonna be doing 1080p gaming, a laptop in many instances like Fortnite and PUBG it's gonna be very similar levels of performance. So I mean, if you're just trying to go for 144 Hertz, a laptop with a 1080 in it is probably gonna be powerful enough. That said, if you're trying to go for 240 Hertz in as many titles as possible, I think a desktop with a full 2080 Ti in it is gonna be your best bet. Overall, I was pretty surprised at how well the laptop stood up to the desktop in titles like Fortnite and PUBG 
and even in Far Cry 5, the main one, of course, is Witcher 3, and that's kind of an outlier here that also helps skew the overall average. If you were to take that out, the performance difference between all three systems would be a lot lower. Anyway, that's my review of using the 2080 Ti in an external GPU enclosure with a laptop with a high-end processor. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on all of this. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell, hit that like button. More fun tech videos coming soon. We'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, hello. <laughs> Brandon, out. <laughs> you okay, buddy? <laughs>